Hey, what's up guys? It's Tobin. I had a need to make a quick scratch server to test some stuff with and I thought it'd be a really good opportunity to show you how quick and easy it is to build a MB tiles uh, base tile map server. It's extremely easy, it's extremely fast, and it's very very cheap for a county sized area you can be serving your base tiles out no problem for five bucks a month and it'll probably be faster than the way you're doing it now so let's just go ahead and jump in because this will be really easy I'm using DigitalOcean and DigitalOcean is uh, one of many 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 cloud whenever I say cloud I start waving my hands hosting option I really like it because it's uh, it's just really, really quick. Their, their service is very good and their interface is very good. But the neat thing about them is their storage is SSD and it's extremely fast. So that, and it's very economical, very reasonable as well. So I really recommend them, but you can use anything you want. It'll just look a little bit different when you're setting it up. Uh, if you are gonna use DigitalOcean and you haven't signed up before, uh, you can find lots of coupon codes. I really like Jupyter Broadcasting if you haven't watched them before. Linux Action Show is one of the best Linux uh, screencasts you'll find. Coder Radio is an excellent, excellent show. If you do anything with uh, if you, anything with software, writing code, uh, excellent, excellent show. Even some Ben stuff here and there, although they have a separate podcast for that. Well, the reason why I bring them up is they usually have a coupon code for DigitalOcean. They have one right now, give you 10 bucks. That's like two months of hosting. For the amount of time I'm gonna keep one of these ser this like test server alive, it's only gonna cost maybe a nickel. So uh, I'd check them out. And if you're looking for a new uh, podcast to watch, Coda Radio, Jupiter Broadcasting, check them out. Once you get all set up on DigitalOcean, you'll create a droplet. A droplet is your cloud server. We're going to say, give it a host name, test1, because I'm not very creative. We'll get the smallest size, which is 512 mega RAM, which for Linux is, for a lot of use cases, is just fine. One CPU, 20 gigabytes of SSD, a terabyte of transfer a month, five bucks a month, very cheap, say New York 2. I'll just say New York 1. No, yeah, maybe. I'll go New York 2. That's where they want. San Francisco, Singapore, Amsterdam. Uh, Ubuntu. They have a, a lot of different Linux distros you can pick from. If you're more comfortable with CentOS or Debian, you can pick those. Go Ubuntu 13.10 64-bit and create Droplet. And it's going to, in the next 60 seconds, get our server all up and running for us. While it's doing that, I'm going to go over here and just show you uh, what this tile server looks like. This is something I forked from uh, uh, C. Helm. I think, it's, I think it's Chris Helm on GitHub. So he deserves uh, all the credit for this. I really just made a fork because there's some weird me kind of stuff I need to do in there. See, this is 30 lines of code is your entire your entire base map MB tile server. If you know anything about JavaScript, you can immediately see what this is doing. It's taking the path given and taking from uh, the arguments, the first one to be the tile set you want, and the rest are the you know, you know, ZXY of the tile. And then it tries to fetch that. And if it has the tile, it sends it back to you. If it doesn't, it gives you a 404. And that's really it. Tiny, tiny 30 lines of code and you are done. That's what that project is. We're probably all set. Uh, yeah, we're all set for that guy. Let me pull up a command line. This is a little bigger. And you, I assume you're gonna know this if you're doing server stuff at all, but you, you do this stuff through SSH, Secure Shell. 
you'll have that built into uh, a Linux or Mac. If you're using Windows, PuTTY is the tool you want, but it's all command line driven. Let's go to, uh, there's the IP address. We'll just do a sanity check here. And it's, you know, saying, hey, I'm here. My server's up running. Think about the last time you went to your IT group and said, hey, I need a server. How long do you think that might take? And compare the answer versus how long it actually took versus like 60 seconds. I'll just let you think about that. So we're going to SSH as root into that IP address. And over my inbox by now, it's saying, uh, well, first it's saying apparently there's a Celtic woman concert at Ovens Auditorium. Uh, not so into the Celtic women concerts. No offense, all you Irish ladies that I'm sure are listening. This wee one is up here saying this test one has been created. Here's your IP address, root, and password, which I will let you see because I'm going to kill this sucker uh, shortly after I finish the screencast. So there's our password. We're going to need that in a second. SSH in there. And it's saying, oh, I've pro they've probably given me this IP address before, so it's saying the key is different. So we're going to remove that sucker. All right, and we'll give it a shot and say, do you know these guys? Probably. And then we'll grab this password again. And there we are on the cloud server, ready to do your cloud type shit. So, we're going to need some software installed on this guy. Let's get, let's see, we're going to need Node.js, Node.js Legacy. There must have been a pissing contest in Ubuntu that changed Node from being Node to Node.js. This Node.js Legacy fixes that so you can just run it as Node uh, because having it as Node.js does break some stuff sometimes. And we're going to need npm because that doesn't get bundled on Ubuntu. And we're going to need git so we can go grab our repository when we need. It's going to grab 53 megabytes of stuff. Knock yourself out, guys. And off it goes. We also have tier 1 bandwidth, uh, so it's pretty darn fast. It just fetched 53 megabytes and it's done. It's already unpacking and is about to install stuff. So let me go over what we're going to do. We're going to uh, set up the node server. We're going to copy in some base tiles. And it's just a very small set I have so you don't have to you know watch it file copy for a long time. And we're going to start serving those out. And then I'm going to show you one of many ways you can have it so the node instance uh, starts itself back up when you, uh, if the server gets rebooted. And starts itself back up if the service fails, which is another good thing. It's all done installing. You can put your node tile server really anywhere. I usually put it in opt. So we'll go to opt. We'll make an apt directory, which probably should be called something cooler. And then we're going to git clone at GitHub repo. We'll put it in tiles and cd into tiles. And here's all our stuff. We got our server JS, and we have a couple things. I have some things where you can install it as a Windows service uh, using uh, n. S S M non sucking service manager, something like that for Windows, and in the starter script for uh, Linux. So next thing we need to do is there are some node dependencies for the tile server. You can just type npm install 
and it's going to fetch the MB tiles node package, the express node package, and any dependencies it might need. In particular, it's going to fetch and uh, compile a SQLite database reader while well, it goes. So it's off fetching more software and installing it. NPM is very verbose. Uh, if it doesn't come back uh, with a big section painted flaming red, it probably was fine. We're going to let it go. And while it's doing that, I'm going to pull, we're going to copy in those tiles I was talking about. And I just have a tiny uh, MB tiles file. It's three megabytes. It's basically a county size zoom levels nine through 12. It's not a whole lot in it. We're going to, let's see, let's make another window. And how you copy in files, if you're on Linux, on, on Linux on anything, whether you're using Nautilus or Dolphin or whatever, it's, it'll just be built into the file browser. On Windows, WinSCP uh, is a good tool to check out. On Mac, you probably have to spend $10 on something with an I in front of it that, uh, that probably comes with a beret. Burn! All right. We're going to go fish, because that's how dolphin rolls, root at, and then that IP address. Well, it's going. It's going to ask for the password. I'm going to put in this big long password. And let's see, we need to go back down to the root and opt and apps and tiles. And we're just going to copy in this MB tiles file. And it's up here copying away. We're all done installing our uh, node requirements. It's all done copying in the file. So let's start the sucker up. Let's go node server.js and it's going to start listening on port 3000. Now I've got a little demo HTML file, which basically is just loading a leaflet map and uh, our tile server. Now this sucker was dot 159 so we're going to I think it actually gave me an IP address that I had for a different server so it's already in there that's kind of handy actually except for when I'm trying to SSH into it again so now we'll go over to this little thing refresh this oh did I bork something There we go. I had it uh, YXZ instead of ZXY because I'm stupid. Here we are. We've got some tiles. And I probably get one more zoom and that's all she wrote. Yep, bonk. That would be zoom 13, which we don't have. And it'll probably send you back a, yeah, a 404, which is what uh, our script sends back when uh, we ain't got those tiles. Boom, tile server. Oh, oh, it hurts. So we got our tile server all set up and you are now ready to serve tiles over the internet for your base tiles forever. Speaking of which, let's install forever. Right now we have a uh, node running on Make sure it's all cleaned up. Yep. We just had node running from the command line, uh, which is not cool for a couple reasons. Uh, one, if node crashes, it's dead and we get no tiles. And two, if the server gets restarted, uh, node's not running and we get no tiles. 
So we're going to use something called forever. Forever is uh, basically a node service kind of manager. Let's install that globally. npm install dash g forever. And I'll go fetch it and install it. It's kind of neat. There's a lot of configuration options for it, uh, which I won't be getting into because I don't know what they are. Uh, but basically, it just starts and stops services for you. And if a service crashes, it does a TCP IP keep alive kind of thing. Crashes after like 100 mil seconds or something, it'll restart it back up for you, which is perfect. So now that's all installed. We should be our, we have this uh, starter.sh, uh, which basically all it does is this goes to our directory and runs forever start server.js. So we have to make that executable. Uh, plus x and let's start it. And it's giving me some warnings. Everyone's always warning me about stuff. We can go forever list and it'll say we've got this sucker running and we should these are kind of cached right now. You go control, go into private browsing modes. These are not cached and see the server is still up and running and going. So now we've got forever running, which will watch our service and restart it if it goes kablam. The next thing we want to do is make sure that starts whenever the server restarts. The proper way to do this would be through systemd or upstart. Uh, we're not proper people, we're just going to use cron. And I put some instructions for it, doing that right in the uh, uh, right in the starter.sh. So basically, we want that. We'll go contab edit contab dash e, and we'll use nano because I'm not a Vim guy. We'll go to the bottom and we'll paste that in here and we're saying whenever we reboot run that starter script and that was that opt apps files starter.sh so now it's set to whenever the server reboots it'll automatically start that sucker up for us and since forever is managing it if it ever crashes while it's running forever, we'll start it back up as well. How about that? You now have a base MB tile server that if you're like a, any kind of size organization that can, you know, put your tiles in under say 20 gigabytes, which is how much space you have, you are golden. You're good to go. And I've, I'm going to put some benchmarks probably in this post or another one, uh, showing you how blazingly fast uh, this tile server is especially versus a spinning platter or windows server which used to be our base tile server still is for some things and uh, you'll be able to uh, have your eyeballs pop out because this tile server does not really hit your cpu at all your cpu will remain pretty flatlined it doesn't really hit your RAM very much at all. Node.js process will be very tiny. Really, your biggest bottleneck is uh, your, your disk I.O. And that's where that SSD is just killer and it really, really flies. So that was setting up a base tile server, getting your tiles in there, uh, having it uh, forever manage it and start up when your server reboots. And... Uh, I think that's everything I want to talk about, and I will catch you guys later. See ya. If I can turn this off.